Coming up, a jet team over DC. We go behind the scenes with the Snowbirds. Top honor for two lawmakers who stand for GA. Doing a pre-flight on an unknown aircraft and getting to know the Legacy 450. Plus, flight testing a 120-year-old glider. AOPA Live this week begins in just a moment. From your first skyward glance, the dream of flight compelled you. And from your first glimpse of a Cirrus, you realized that dream had a name. Cirrus Aircraft. Go where you've never been before. We hope your June is off to a good start. Thanks for watching AOPA Live this week. I'm Melissa Rudinger. And I'm Tom Haynes. What a better way to kick off flying season than with a flyover of Washington, D.C. The Royal Canadian Air Force Snowbirds treated D.C. to a diplomatic flyover. AOPA Online's David Toulis and members of the Snowbird team caught it all on camera. Delmex approach and at 655, 10,000. We had a 655 on departure. Climb maintain a 17,000. We flew from uh, Latrobe, Pennsylvania. And we came in to uh, the Washington, D.C. region. Okay, sounds great. That's Snowbird 1. Obviously, a lot goes into planning uh, the intricacies of this airspace. So we have a lot of products actually that we came up with, and it's it's almost similar to what you would have an attack map or something in the fighter community. So we have uh, airspace restrictions. We have to abide by it. We have routing and information, and everything. We flew east to west from uh, roughly halfway down the ILS for uh, one nine right in Andrews. And, uh, and we veered right off of that and went directly uh, west on a heading of 281 degrees magnetic and that kind of lined up the Nationals Ballpark Stadium and the Pentagon. And that kept, kept us about a nautical mile to 0.6 nautical miles away from the uh, restricted area over the mall. Thanks, David. Pretty cool stuff. You can catch the Snowbirds on tour at air shows across the U.S. this summer. AOPA is standing up for United States military veterans. AOPA joined with nine other GA associations to take a stand for vets. We wrote to the U.S. Senate and urged them not to place limits on flight training benefits for veterans. The letter was sent one day after the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee approved the Veterans First Act without the controversial cap on the flight training. The House passed a similar bill with a cap just over $20,000, and that's not enough for a vet to earn a commercial pilot certificate. With all the rancor and inaction in Washington, it's pretty easy to be cynical about politicians, but the truth is there are many who are making a difference for general aviation. Each year, AOPA honors an elected or government official who has made a significant contribution to GA advancement. This year, two senators on opposite sides of the aisle worked together for third-class medical reform, the Part 23 aircraft certification rewrite, and other issues dear to the hearts of pilots. Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia and Senator Jim Inhofe of Oklahoma. You've been a longtime supporter of AOPA and really have done some tremendous things to protect our freedom to fly. And frankly, as a winner in 1994, and really our only second time winner for the Doc Hantreff Award, Ooh. which is uh, our most significant award in general aviation, and he was one of our founders, and you are yeah. actually behaving and helping us just like we are, the freedom to fly, mm -hmm. making it safe, making it fun. So yeah. thank you for what you've done. We've got yeah. you a nice little trophy here. That's not a little trophy. <laughs> That's, that is a big bird, let me tell you. And I, I thank you very much. It's, it's very meaningful because, you know, AOPA, we've been family for such a long period of time. And uh, quite often I've told people, when you really want to register and find out to get something done, the ones who keep the numbers are AOPA. And so that's been very helpful. Thank you very much. I accept it and enjoy it. Well, I know you made a big difference in the co-chairing the GA caucus, as well as what you're doing for the third class medical. Right. And you're making a big difference. And we really appreciate it. And as much, since a member since 1968. A long, really long time us. member. I, you know, Pretty I believe. Good. I believe in AOPA and I appreciate it. I look forward to the magazine. And uh, this is a great honor and I, I will display it proudly. Senator Manchin said Democrats and Republicans worked together because they understood the importance of general aviation to their communities. Uh, we came and compromised and worked on something that made people understand we are losing 6,000 pilots every year.
private pilots because people aren't getting back into it. We need to make a concerted effort to get people back into it. The thrill is still there. They don't think the opportunity or availability is there. And we've got to show them how easy it is to get back in aviation. So with that being said, I think people understood. Uh, we changed some of our um, third class medical uh, requirements, took some of the bureaucratic uh, restrictions off of it. And I think it's going to be very more user friendly, if you will. And that's what we were trying to do. Senator Inhofe said aviation is truly a bipartisan issue. Aviation is strong throughout America. Now, some states like Oklahoma have a higher percentage of licensed pilots per capita than other states, but, but still, it's one where it's, it doesn't regard any political philosophy or political party. It's, a, it's a, almost a single issue to a lot of people. And when I go in, in uh, where there are large groups of aviators around, that's all they want to talk about is aviation. And so I think some of the politicians who are not all that hooked into it realize that there's a real passion there and that they have to at least give a fair shake. Congratulations to the senators on winning the Hartrant Award. Mama, don't take my Kodachrome. As we record this, AOPA's photo contest has just a few days left for you to vote. From all the amazing submissions, our judges picked the top photos for you to vote on. The winner of each category will win a Faro G3 headset and an AOPA backpack. To see the finalists and vote, go to aopa.org slash photocontest. 120 years later, and we learn how brilliant Otto Lilienthal truly was. The aviation pioneer was killed in 1896 when his glider crashed. And now we know it was because of high winds. The glider he flew has been recreated by the Otto Lilienthal Museum in Germany, and it was put to the test in a modern wind tunnel. The design proved to be inherently stable decades ahead of its time. The researchers think a strong wind gust hit the glider on the fateful flight. Coming up after the break, learn how to pre-flight an unknown airplane. And take a trip in the Goldilocks of business jets. You're watching AOPA Live this week. It's been called the most sophisticated single-engine airplane ever, but to the people whose loved ones are alive today, it's called a lifesaver. The Cirrus Airframe Parachute System, only from Cirrus Aircraft. Welcome back. You're watching AOPA Live this week. There's a bunch of really happy ladies right now. And it's not just anyone, but the female heroes of World War II. We are, of course, talking about the Wasps. There are just over 100 of the female military pilots left. You'll remember that they served in World War II by flying aircraft. And every year, they get together at the old training base in Sweetwater, Texas. But this year, they had an extra special treat on the way there. The Tarrant Co County College in Fort Worth, Texas is restoring a very special airplane. This Beach 18 is the last airplane WASP founder, founder Jacqueline Cochran ever owned. A team of folks at the college is restoring the beach and they hope to use it as a flying historical tribute to the wasps. The organizers of the project gave several of the wasps a chance to check out their progress this weekend. Sometime during your flying career, you may find yourself about to pilot an aircraft you know nothing about. So how do you know that it's safe to fly? Well, the AOPA Foundation recently received a Cessna 182 as a donation and two of our pilots went out to Driggs, Idaho to bring it back to Frederick. Warren Morningstar reports on the very thorough pre-flight before launching across the Rockies and the Plains. Our first view of 55 Sierra is as we walk out the FBO door. And for a 52-year-old airplane, she looks mighty good. But you can't judge an airplane by its paint. Well, the first thing that we want to do is to inspect the logbooks and make sure that uh, the annual is up to date and look for any other uh, discrepancies or repairs that have been done to the airplane in its history. And we find a very complete history on 55 Sierra. Maintenance logs, list of ADs, inspection records. Tells you the guy's pretty thorough. Mike's record examination turns up one thing that could be a concern. Well, when I looked through the log books, there was evidence of a, uh, of a, a possible prop strike. There was uh, damage to the right wing. And, and but more research satisfies Mike. So I started digging in the log books and, and discovered that, yes, in fact, there was a prop strike in um, November of 2002. And the prop was replaced. The engine was completely re rebuilt, overhauled. 
and the skin damage was all repaired. The FBO says the aircraft has been flying regularly. That's uh, also a good sign. It has been a hangar queen sitting in a hangar for months without being flown. Next step, a very thorough pre-flight. Just checking the main landing gear strut. Oh. Brake lines leading to the brake assembly. Condition of the brake, pucks and disc. Just antennas, looking for the condition of the beacon, make sure that the lens itself is not cracked. Just checking the condition of the fuselage, looking for any damage, ripples in the skin that would indicate uh, G stress loading. Nice and clear, no debris, no water. Blue in color, smells like avgas. Just inspecting the main landing gear and the cow flaps while I'm under here. Looking for damage again. Tire's in great shape. Looks like it's properly inflated. Yeah, it looks like we've got plenty of oil and it's uh, clean, nice and clean. One of the concerns with this airplane is the filler caps. The original filler caps on these 182s were prone to leakage and uh, water contamination of the fuel. This particular airplane has got been outfitted with the newer vented caps that are leak proof. Well, of all the airplanes I've looked at, this is this one has the, probably the most meticulous and well well uh, kept uh, maintenance logs that I've ever seen. And the exterior looks good, the interior looks good. I think we have a good airplane here. And Mike keeps a careful eye on the engine gauges as we taxi out. One last concession to flying an unknown aircraft, we're going to fly the valleys and the highways until we're sure everything is copacetic. Warren Morningstar, AOPA Live. The 182 we pre-flighted and flew across the country was generously donated to the AOPA Foundation. Airplane donations make a big difference to help support the future of general aviation. So the aircraft donation program or the Give Wings program has been really helpful allowing pilots who no longer need an airplane do something really good with it, get a tax benefit, and move that airplane on to a new pilot who's excited about getting an airplane. To find out more about how to donate an airplane and receive a tax deduction or buy one of the donated airplanes, visit foundation.aopa.org and click on Ways to Give. Finally this week, a new offering from Embraer. Not too big, not too small. Tom Horn shows us the Legacy 450 is just right. Embraer calls its latest airplane, the Legacy 450, a mid-light business jet. That is, something between a light jet and a mid-sized one. But the 450 certainly seems to lean toward a true mid-sized design. With its flat floor and six foot high cabin. The interior features include forward club seating, two aft seats, and a galley. Like its big brother, the Legacy 500, the 450 is a fly-by-wire airplane. And both use the Rockwell Collins Proline Fusion avionics suite. For that matter, the airplanes share a 95% parts commonality, and pilots typed in one airplane can fly the other. Even the Honeywell engines are the same, although the 450's engines are rated at 6,540 pounds of thrust. The Legacy 500's engines are rated at 7,036 pounds of thrust. The 450's FADEX settings account for the lower max thrust settings. With its 470 knot max cruise speed at 35,000 feet, plus its max range of 2,900 nautical miles and its swanky cabin, the 450 has its sights set on the Citation Latitude as its main competition. Both airplanes perform comparably and are comparably priced, so the competition should be interesting. Tom Horn, AOPA Live. 
You can read more about the Legacy 450 in the July Turbine Edition of AOPA Pilot Magazine. The digital edition is out now. Sounds like quite an airplane. Well, that does it for us this week. I'm Tom Haynes. I'm Melissa Rudinger. See you next Thursday for another AOPA Live This Week.